Welcome to refurbishing a vintage model steamboat. This is part 8, fitting the boiler backhead fittings. The backhead is the back part of the boiler, somewhat unsurprisingly. This boiler backhead, or any boiler backhead for that matter, contains essential fittings for the control of the boiler. The first piece to go in place is the water gauge. This is an essential part of a boiler. If you don't know how much water you've got in the boiler, you could be in big trouble. A water gauge generally comprises of three standard parts, a top fitting, a bottom fitting and a piece of glass that goes between the two. The piece of glass is held in place by a couple of o-rings, one at each end, that can be tightened onto the fittings using a nut. When fitting a water gauge to a model steam boiler, there are one or two things you'll find will probably go wrong, particularly if it's the first time you've ever done it, fitting the water gauge I mean. It is absolutely essential that the glass tube lines up when passing through the top part of the water gauge with the bottom part of the water gauge. And to achieve this, the first thing to look at is how far in does it need to be and in which position can it be. So I'm using a copper washer here. And when I tighten this copper washer, you will see that this one is nowhere near. No, nope, that's not going to work with the glass sticking out of the side. So I would need to use a thinner washer or a thicker washer to get the top fitting precisely in the right place. It's better to have a washer on this part of the fitting, but it's not totally essential. I will of course be using Loctite 542, so it's not going to leak around the thread anyway. But it does need to be firmly in place. It's no good just sticking it in there and hoping for the best. It needs to be quite tight and nipped up to the boiler itself. When you're doing a job like this, you must take your time and get it right. This is a very important part of the build, and if the water gauge isn't right, and if it leaks, or if it cracks, then that is not a good thing. The worst case scenario would be on a coal-fired boiler, and using a water gauge without a pair of shut-off cocks, which would mean that if the glass broke, not only would you have the risk of being hit in the face by some broken glass, or on a load of boiling water and steam, but if it was a coal-fired boiler, then the boiler would quickly run dry. And a coal-fired boiler with a white-hot fire going into meltdown is not something you really want to see. What I'm doing here is using a screwdriver, which is about the same diameter as the glass tube, to align the two parts of the fitting. You must not put a lot of pressure on the fitting. It looks like I'm on the video, but I'm not. And once the top fitting is aligned with the bottom fitting, the bottom fitting, of course, is just in there loosely, you can see how far the bottom fitting needs to go in or out. In this case, just a tiny bit more adjustment with the screwdriver was required. And it's time now for a dummy run with the piece of glass. And by the way, I'm doing this very wrong at the moment to just illustrate a point. If you look at the top fitting, you will see that the glass is too long and it's covering the hole through into the boiler. If you do it like this, the water gauge cannot function as a water gauge because one end of it is blocked. Anyway, for the moment, here I am with some Loctite 542 and I'm fitting the bottom part of the water gauge. I've found a suitable washer and it's just about to be screwed into place. It is essential not to over tighten these parts. If you over tighten the water gauge fittings, then you could fracture them and you won't really find out till a few months down the line when part of the fitting drops from together. Once again, I'm making a final adjustment. Well, it's not an adjustment, it fits perfectly with my screwdriver. I would not dream of using the glass for this. Until it's perfectly aligned, the glass will just break. Ah yes, and now, the black art of cutting glass. I thought I would include this. These are some random bits of broken gauge that I've got in a box. How I normally cut them is to just use a needle file and just file a small nick in the glass at the top and then I just use my adjustable spanner to snap it off. I'll do it a few times so you can see how to do it. So it's a quick file with the needle file, just a little notch like this. And you don't need to file all the way around, just a notch at the top. And then I just use my adjustable spanner, fully adjusted to the diameter of the glass, to snap off the piece of glass. And as you can see, it comes off clean. Being a musician, I'm very used to practicing. This is really how I've taught myself a lot of things over the years. When I first bought a lathe, I was never engineer trained at all. I just bought a lathe and reduced loads of bits of metal to swarf and figured out tool angles and speeds and feeds etc. Usual health and safety warning, when working with dangerous things like pieces of glass, I would definitely wear some eye protection and probably a pair of gloves would be a good idea, but I can't do with gloves. Right, you see the principle here. 
The glass goes through the top fitting, an O-ring's put on the glass tube, and then this nut is partially tightened up. Don't tighten it up all the way, otherwise you will not be able to move the glass in the fitting. Then you possibly will cut yourself, particularly if the glass breaks. So then a nut goes on, and another O-ring goes on the bottom part. Bear in mind that these ends of the tubes are probably quite sharp, so go at it square. If you go at it square, you're okay. If you got it from a corner, and the corner sticks in your finger, then you will bleed all over your boiler and all over the bench. Here's a quick tip. If your copper washer is not the correct thickness, place it on a piece of steel and hit it with a hammer a few times, and it will make it thinner. A word of caution, never over tighten the nuts on the water gauge that hold the glass. Live with it like this for a while. If you put any compressed air or any water in the boiler and see any bubbling around these gland nuts, then you can tighten them up a little more. But do not over tighten these gland nuts, otherwise the glass will crack. You may be lucky and it may not crack on the first steaming, but if these nuts are too tight, the contraction and expansion of the boiler and its water gauge will eventually crack the glass. Over now to the pressure gauges. I have a choice of a small one, which I think is three quarters of an inch, or a large one, which is about an inch. And I think it's a no contest that the large one wins, because sailing the boat past with a tiny pressure gauge on is not going to tell you what pressure's in the boiler. But if I mount this pressure gauge in a position where it can be seen without taking the superstructure off the boat, then the operator will always know how much pressure they have in the boiler just by sailing the boat past. So I'm going to mount the pressure gauge in an unorthodox way. I put a quarter by 40 union in the boiler, and a pipe from this is going to bring the pressure gauge to where it can be seen. I don't mean stuck up in the middle of the deck, but it will be underneath a hatch that can be left open while sailing. Also, I have to look at the ventilation in this boat, because there needs to be plenty of air available to make the burner burn efficiently. So I'm going to make this hatch removable, just for sailing it, it can be put back on if the model's on show. I'm sure you get the idea, I'm going to use a much longer pipe to remotely mount the pressure gauge. Not this particular pipe, this is just for demonstration purposes. The last thing to do for this episode is to fit a washer underneath the tap on top of the boiler so it faces in the correct direction. And I just thought I'd take this opportunity to show off my box of copper washers, most of which I buy from Blackgate's Engineering. And I find the right one that allows me, with some Loctite 542 of course, to make sure that the tap is securely fixed and facing in the right direction. Finally, a quick look in the boat, which is currently on another bench in the workshop. I'll be moving it across shortly after I've sat it in the bath to make sure it doesn't leak. One of the later jobs on this boat is to fix the broken stanchions. There are plenty of them and they're too far gone really. I think I'll buy some new ones. Also, in the stern of the boat that the camera is currently looking at, this is where I'm going to build the radio compartment. It will be away from any water, steam or heat, and hopefully, if the boat doesn't sink, it will remain watertight. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.